Wow. This is Jeff coming at you with Shooting and Fun, and if you're not careful, you might just learn something before it's done. Hey, hey, hey! If I were to tell you that the ballistics of a 12-gauge shotgun slug were closer to that of a ping-pong ball than a rifle round, you'd probably think I was crazy. But today, we're going to show you exactly how that is. Today, we'll be launching these Russian slugs called the Twister, sent to us by a viewer named Psycho Clown. We'll be shooting these at a distance of 100 meters, or 110 yards, at 1400 feet per second, or 426 meters a second. 12 gauge slugs are very aerodynamically inefficient, meaning they lose a lot of energy really quickly as they go down range. Yes, they have a ton of energy at close range, actually closer to a couple tons of energy, and the effective range of a 12 gauge slug is only 50 to 75 yards. And in this case, the effective range doesn't necessarily mean the accuracy of the slug, but how much energy it still has the further it goes down range. In other words, it's stopping power. 110 yards away we have Doug with a Kevlar vest on. Let's see if Danny can even hit it. I don't think you can ask for a better shot than that. Dead center. Now I was operating the high speed camera and I tried to get fancy on this shot. What I tried to do is as soon as Danny shot was to manually zoom as fast as I could and try to follow the shot with the camera. Now I don't claim to have superhuman reflexes, but I don't think any human could zoom that lens fast enough to get the shot that I was hoping to get. As you can see, the slug hit the target long before I started zooming in on it. I think the shot would be possible if I started zooming a split second before he took the shot, but I think we'd be relying more on luck than practice and skill. Let's take a look at the lead slug after traveling 110 yards and hitting a Kevlar vest. We can see that it has hardly deformed at all. At only 10 or 20 yards, this slug would have flattened out like a pancake. Safety off. Wow, those things are accurate as heck. Let's compare this 110 yard shot with a much lighter and slower velocity 12 gauge round, but only at 10 yards. Yay. Now this slug weighs 7 eighths of an ounce and has a muzzle velocity of 1200 feet per second. At this close range of 10 yards, the amount of energy hitting the dummy wearing the Kevlar vest is absolutely tremendous. Now let's compare this to our 110 yard shot with a one and a quarter ounce slug traveling 1400 feet per second. Now I've been told that a slug loses about 10% of its velocity every 10 yards. Whether that figure is correct or not, I'm not really sure, but we can see how much energy this heavier and faster slug has lost in only 110 yards. And again, the recovered slug shows very little deformation. Despite all that, this slug would have effectively still been deadly at that range. Ready? Yep, smooth bore. Ready. Hit low. I see Looks the like wad. Looks like the wad came apart again. About halfway down, I see it. The plastic wad is supposed to stay attached to the slug, but in every shot, it's come apart. Strangely, that hasn't affected the accuracy very much. You can see how far the slug is dropping in this distance. In fact, it dropped so much in this shot, it skipped off the ground a couple feet in front of the target, yet still hit it somehow. The recovered slug shows where it struck the ground. That went uh, high right. Yeah. In contrast to the last shot, which had a lot of drop, this one had almost no drop until it got to about 150 yards away. Then it dropped like a rock. By pure accident, this is one of the most fascinating shots I've ever filmed with the high-speed camera. Somehow the angular momentum of the slug became backspin. Just like a golf ball with backspin or an airsoft BB with hop-up, our big heavy lead slug traveling at supersonic speeds was so affected by this Magnus effect 
that it actually rose a little bit. Then something really weird happened, and it almost looks like it hit an invisible force field as it suddenly dove to the ground. What you just witnessed is something called the tennis racket theorem. The axis suddenly shifted, and now we have forward spin causing it to dive down instead of rise. Fascinating stuff there. Are you ready? I'm ready. Wow. Wow. What's going on? Man, you started out so good. <laughs> And if you thought the last shot was weird, this one is, is equally weird. What you're seeing is a supersonic shotgun round knuckleball. The heavy lead slug is acting more like, uh, like a ping pong ball or golf ball or baseball. <laughs> I don't know where that one went. In this video, we wanted to show you how much energy a shotgun slug actually loses as it travels downrange. But by sheer misfortune or luck or whatever, we were able to show you some other weird physics going on when things just don't go right. And it was just a fluke that we were able to get a, a backspin or a sidespin on these slugs. In this shot, we had nothing but backspin. We didn't have that uh, tennis racket theorem going on, at least from what we could see here. Got him. Okay. And just like that, things kind of went back to normal again. It was like we had a temporary visit to the Twilight Zone. And I guess by normal, I, I mean Danny was able to hit the target again where he was aiming. Now the ballistics of this shot were far from ideal too. It was still kind of a wonky flying shot. But at least we didn't have anything artificially steering the slug in weird directions. Now I'm still trying to wrap my head around why we were having better ballistics at the beginning than near the end. All I can think of is maybe the rifling of the barrel was getting fouled and affecting the spin a bit. And for our final test we have a different slug called the LBC Sabo which has discarding Sabos. Let's see how this does. Wow. And just when we thought everything was working perfectly, again, we have separation of the wad and the lead nose. <laughs> Come on. But somehow that did not affect its accuracy. I don't know why. You probably noticed that it didn't have enough energy to even knock the dummy over. The slug did impact nose first, but hardly deformed at all. At the time we filmed this, we thought it was such a failure that it wasn't even worth posting. After I got home and started reviewing the high-speed footage, I saw a lot of amazing things going on, and I hope you enjoyed it too. Please like the video if you appreciate the time we put into making this. Thank you.